Teardown time. This is the Nokia C101. It's about a five-year-old phone. It was the last phone that I owned before I switched over to smartphones. Uh, and it's a really good example of sort of how small the phones got uh, that could just do basic phone calls. Let's uh, tear it apart and take a look at all the silicon that was used to make this. Okay, it's a single circuit board in this phone. It's uh, old school. It wasn't held together by glue. It was just screws, fortunately. So much easier to disassemble those modern uh, iPhones. Uh, let's see, just uh, staring down here on the back of the circuit board, there's three obvious metal cans. Uh, those are Faraday shields. Uh, if you just pop those off, uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of integrated circuits uh, sitting there. Okay, uh, rotated and zoomed in section of the board here. If you see that little red splotch in the bottom, it's basically the RF input. Uh, and that goes into the first chip in the bottom. That means almost certainly that's the RF cell phone processing section. Uh, you go above that uh, is basically the application processor providing all of the... Uh, CPU functions. Uh, above that, uh, almost certainly some sort of memory storage device. Uh, we'll sort that one down uh, once we de-encapsulate it. Uh, to the uh, right there, that's a Bluetooth chip, and uh, next to it is a little boot prom, it looks like. So let's uh, pop off the packaging there and uh, see what the actual dies look like. Uh, so here they are, a nice uh, selection of uh, five dies. Uh, the die on the extreme left, uh, let's just zoom into a bigger picture of it. Um, Almost looks like some sort of memory array without question. And if we zoom a little bit further in, we can see an Intel logo. Uh, this is a, probably a NOR flash component. Uh, Intel abandoned that business quite some time ago, but within the ear of this phone, uh, wouldn't be too surprising that they would be supplying some NOR flash. Going over to the next one, uh, gets a little more interesting to zoom into some of those uh, inductors, uh, obviously telling me it's an RF component of some sort. And if I come down and see this word BC8 uh, Gemini, uh, it's telling me that this is uh, almost certainly the uh, Bluetooth chip. Uh, there's fairly heavy metalization on the digital section. I guess I'd have to uh, take that off to stare at it. Uh, going over one further, uh, we can see a, a boot prom, basically an SPI prom. You sort of get a good sense how big it is compared to the die size of, say, the NOR flash. Going over further, uh, the application processor, uh, undoubtedly an ARM processor of some sort with tons of peripherals. And the piece de resistance, uh, which is the real chip uh, that's fascinating, the RF uh, front end. Uh, let me just insert a, a much more zoomed in uh, picture and just go sort of scan by it. Uh, you can see it's entirely a, a discrete looking design. Uh, inductors, uh, capacitors, resistors, uh, transistors, uh, all at a super low density because this is uh, black magic stuff going on here. Uh, this is basically providing the interface from the... Uh, GSM interface to back to into the baseband processor, so a very attractive chip. Okay, flip the circuit board over, two sections, one white, one black. The white section is the keyboard, the black is the LCD. If we zoom into the keypad, uh, you can see they're basically tactile domes that's been covered by an adhesive white plastic, making the keypad pretty waterproof, and uh, I think that's a bit of theme when I was looking at this phone. Um, it, phones in this era from this company had a good reputation. Uh, for ruggedness and uh, things like covering your key uh, pad up entirely so no liquid can get into it uh, is a real good way of uh, achieving reliability. Oh, so let's come back to the packaging. Uh, this is the uh, applications processor. The logo there in the upper left that uh, has an eye on it uh, is from Infineon and uh, that makes sense. They are a big player in this uh, era. And if you flip it over, it looks like it's a circuit board and that's exactly what it is. Uh, BJ's basically are little tiny circuit boards built on a very special substrate uh, which can allow some incredibly fine details, much finer than a traditional circuit board. Uh, going back to another die shot of the application processor, uh, you can see there's tremendous uh, metalization on it and uh, if you want to sort of get more details on what's going on in the peripherals, you have to strip the metal off and that requires uh, hydrofluoric acid. Fairly dangerous process actually, um, I don't do it too often, it doesn't look like it's worth it on this one. Looking at uh, another really interesting part, that's the Bluetooth. Um, what we're looking at there at the back is the silicon die. There's no packaging in the device at all. What they do is they put the balls directly on the wafer and they solder it directly to the circuit board. No packaging. Sometimes they'll underfill them uh, to prevent moisture from creeping into the balls. I don't think I see that in this device. Uh, but uh, it's a really economical way, but more importantly for trying to tr achieve really good signal integrity on some super high frequency signals of which Bluetooth certainly would qualify. This kind of approach is really good because there's uh, very little pathways between the component uh, and the uh, circuit board. Other neat things, this is just a photograph of the speaker. You can see it's got those little springs on it. Uh, it presses down for the circuit board. Looks like there's some sort of conductive ink on the actual board, so there's really good reliability. 
Oh, so we have it. Just some gorgeous silicon coming out of this old phone. I'll throw up the photographs on my blog if you want to take a much more intense look at them. They're actually really large files. Uh, they're basically combined from mosaics of multiple photographs, especially the RF chip. Just, uh, just gorgeous.